my neck look like a bullfrog pumping. Have you ever seen like a bullfrog with a, with a, in its throat pumps like that? That's what my neck looked like. All that blood was regurgitating up there. These flowers are coming out pretty, aren't they? My name's Tammy, live in Christiansburg, Virginia. All my family, for the most part, has been really healthy. And I didn't know I had blood pressure problems. Tammy presented to us with a large aortic aneurysm that you could see pulsating in the base of her neck, right above her breastbone. And that's a ballooning of the artery in the chest. Her blood pressure when she presented was 240 over 40. She had a leak in her aortic valve in her heart. So the one-way valve was allowing two-way blood flow. And yeah, I was like, this blood pressure is like, really? How, why are you still alive? People couldn't believe you're still alive with this blood pressure like that. We searched for a place to go for six months. We found out that Andy Pippa was the coordinator for the bloodless surgery program there at Johns Hopkins. Tammy called us because she couldn't find a doctor or a hospital that would uh, operate on her without resorting to a blood transfusion. I did not want to do this no blood transfusion period. That's one reason it bothered me because they said it was such a bloody surgery. But with my religion being a Jehovah's Witness, I wasn't going to take any blood. But I also didn't want to die on the operating table either. The fact that she took her stand for, for no blood transfusion and the courage that she showed was an inspiration to me. Our bloodless program is designed to care for patients who wish to get therapy for their illnesses or to undergo a surgery without receiving transfused blood products. And so our role as the bloodless program is to care for these patients, to get them ready for surgery when they need surgery, to keep their blood at a, you know, a healthy level. Every time we avoid a transfusion, we avoid potential complications like hepatitis, there's HIV, taco and trally, which are complications from blood transfusion that can be fatal. Okay, so this is a fresh blood sample. So by avoiding unnecessary transfusions, we're actually saving lives. And I haven't met a patient yet that wouldn't rather have their own blood back uh, as opposed to someone else's blood coming from the blood bank. Nobody plans to go to the hospital. It's, it's really a scary place to be. The fact that I can make a patient feel more at ease is key to their having a good outcome. We had to be um, very careful with Tammy because we wanted to be sure that her level of blood, the strength of her blood, was at a safe level for her to get through the surgery. We did several things special in the operating room. First, we did something called ANH, where we bank the patient's own blood right before the surgery begins. Then we used a medication called Amicar that reduces bleeding during surgery. And third, uh, we use a device called a cell saver, which collects the blood that patients lose during surgery, cleans it, processes it, and then we can give them back their own blood before the end of the procedure. In Tammy's case, without the cell saver, I'm not sure we could have brought her through the surgery successfully. As our bloodless program has grown over the years, we've gained a lot of experience and expertise in caring for these patients. By providing care to Jehovah's Witness patients, for example, we're perfecting methods of blood conservation that will benefit all patients. The compassionate nature of this team, everybody on it, makes the patients feel special. I'm very grateful for Johns Hopkins, for the bloodless surgery team. I made it, and I did it without no blood.